there are literally thousands of books written on trading and one of the big problems is that a lot of these authors just use a reputation to cash out in a book and they don't actually really give any useful advice. Now I've read hundreds of trading books myself and in this video I'm going to go through 10 of the best trading books that I've read uh, so you can learn quite quickly and avoid all the rubbish books. So let's get started. Welcome everybody, Michael Taylor here with the Shifting Shares channel here on YouTube. Just want to say a big thank you for tuning in and taking a part of your day to be here. Please do subscribe and hit the red button if you haven't done already. Uh, your support does mean a lot and you won't miss out on any future videos. For those that don't know me, I'm a full-time trader of my own private capital in the UK stock market and in this channel we're going to be covering everything UK stocks and some opportunities to make some money as well. So the first book that I think every serious trader should read is called Alpha Trader by Brent Donnelly. Now Brent's been around for a long time, he's been trading for decades and he's a professional and in Alpha Trader he covers lots of different things that have definitely impacted my P&L for the better as well as the emotional side of trading because when you trade as a livelihood and you're dependent on the market for a living, it can really cause plenty of stress and emotions. Uh, for example, if you make a lot of money in the first quarter, uh, your goal then is to not give it back when perhaps you should be stepping on the accelerator. And it's all around managing your mindset around money and trading, as well as useful tips to improve your P&L as well. So Alpha Trader, Personally, I think it's trading gold. Um, it's worth every penny and it's a book, so it's probably about the price of a cup of coffee or something. Uh, you can buy it on Amazon or, well, I'd say buy it from your local bookshop, but they probably don't have it. So in this case, Amazon is probably best. The second book that I think every serious trader should read is called One Good Trade by Mike Bellafury. And Mike is from SMB Capital, a proprietary trading firm in New York and in this book he really taught me about the importance of making one good trade over and over and over again. Now if you focus on making one good trade each time that means making sure you've done your homework on the trade, getting your entry correct, your risk management in place and making sure that all the mechanics of the trade are spot on then eventually you'll be able to profit in the market because you're making one good trade continuously. And lots of traders think that it's always one big trade that makes them the money. And sometimes this is the case because we have the fat tail risk to the upside on the P&L. Because remember, we want small losses, small wins and big wins. But the reality is that you as a trader uh, make money through being consistent. So if you can get this into uh, your philosophy of trading if you if you can start to make one good trade each time and just focus on each trade as it comes I do believe this will make you a better trader and this book is definitely worth a read because it taught me lots of things even though it's about the US market and I trade UK stocks personally I found it a very good book the third book is trade like a stock market wizard by Mark Minervini now this book seriously improved my risk management skills because Mark is all about managing the downside on a trade. Um, and he has a saying that those who trade without stops eventually stop trading. And it's a simple quote, but if you think about it, it is right because if you can't accurately define the risk on a single trade, that means that you are actually risking 100% of that position on a trade because you don't have a stop. Uh, you can't define the risk. And if you can't really define the risk, then you can't actually scale your account. Because remember, uh, you want to be risking 10, 15, maybe 20% on a position in order to make more. And in that case, if you're right 50% of the time, uh, you're profitable. Now you can even have a strike rate of lower than 50%, but if your risk to reward is good, then you can still be profitable, net of commissions and fees. And one thing that we can do with stops is to adjust for risk. Uh, so that means that we pick a point on the chart 
uh, we plug it into the position size calculator on the so what we can do is load up a chart look at support and resistance our entry and exit and plug those numbers into the position size calculator which is on my website and then this will tell you the amount of shares to expose but trade like a stock market wizard had a big impact on me as a trader as i say it is something that new traders struggle with and so it's a, a thoroughly recommended book to read. The fourth book is Unknown Market Wizards by Jack Schwager and what this book contains is a load of people who you've never heard of who make money in the market in mysterious and wonderful ways and it's quite interesting because even though personally I don't trade all of their asset classes it is interesting to see how people can do well and the thought patterns behind that and I remember in the previous Market Wizards book because it is a series uh, there was one person who traded the most illiquid of stocks that would trade only a handful of times a day and this is how we would make his money trading ticks in illiquid stocks and it was quite impressive because he had that edge because nobody else had thought of it or was willing to do it so it just goes to show that even though the market is so big uh, there's always an edge to be found and there's always money to be made so I would recommend all of this series. There's even a hedge fund wizards as well. They're the type of books that you can take on holiday. It's a conversational style, uh, like an interview. Uh, so it's an easy read. Uh, and yeah, I would recommend all of these books. The fifth book that I think every serious trader should read is The Skeptical Investor by John Stepek. Now John's the executive editor at Money Week, a magazine that I've contributed to a few times but his book's very good because it goes through the psychology of bubbles and especially in small cap stocks we do see manias in stocks where people are bidding up something with zero revenue and it can become a hundred million market cap um, it is crazy to see but what happens is essentially the stock goes up which then reinforces that loop that because the stock went up and must be right uh, so it's those positive confirmation feedback loops of people believing they're right so they buy more and then people who've missed out look at the stock going up and they think that oh, I must buy this so they buy as well uh, so it's a great book into the psychology of being a contrarian uh, and in my view being a contrarian is not necessarily doing what everyone else does it is thinking for yourself finding your own trades, using your own edge in order to make money in the market. So this is a great book for trading psychology. I'm not sure if John intended it to be that way, but it's a very good book and one that makes the top 10 list. The sixth book is The Art of Execution by Lee Freeman Shaw. Now Lee was a fund manager and what he did is he conducted a study on the best money managers in the world and he looked at all of the trades across a several year period in order to see who made money, who didn't, and why that was. And he found that, that uh, these fund managers could be grouped into specific groups. Uh, so for example, there was the hunter. Now the hunter would find an idea and slowly average in, and as the stock price fell, they would keep buying. Um, so the, these people, were able to average down and actually make money um, and then there was uh, another type the assassins now the assassins ruthlessly cut any loss very small which is similar to my trading style and they knew that unchecked losses were what ruined the account so they did the exact opposite of the hunters and yet they too were still able to make money now the third group when it came to this were the rabbits and like a rabbit in, in a headlights, they just froze. They didn't do anything. So if a stock fell, they didn't cut it or they didn't buy more. So from this, from this lesson, we can learn that you need to have a strategy that you stick to uh, and that you can prove that works. Personally, I don't average down because, uh, well, there's one fund manager who kept on averaging down into Kodak and then Kodak went bust and then he lost all of his money. So it's not for me, I'm not saying that it doesn't work, I'm just saying it's not for me. But yeah, this book details about entries and exits 
as well. So it's worth reading just in order to hear about people's own styles and then develop your own style based on that. Book number seven is Monster Stocks by John Boyke and it's a very catchy title and it was a great read and Monster Stocks taught me about trading the stocks that will yield uh, high returns by buying big breakouts um, and these monster stocks run up very quickly and then you ride them and you take profits. So it's all about finding trends, it's all about finding the right stocks that are going to trend in that way. Um, so it is very insightful, it is focused on the US market but I found that a lot of the knowledge in this book could be transferred to the UK market as well. So I mainly trade breakouts and trends so I found monster stocks very helpful because that's where I'm looking to improve my trading, uh, get into stocks early and capture the trend as the stock rises. Book number eight is the playbook and it's the second of Mike's books to be featured in this list and it's also his second book. And in this book he talks about the mindset of a professional trader and also lists out how we can map out our trades into a playbook so that we can learn them like the back of our hand and use them in the market. And I found this very useful because uh, for a while I was just trading and not really thinking about what the actual methodology of my trades should be. So for example on breakouts I know exactly what I want to look for now in a cup and handle. I know exactly what to look for, what to search for, what to filter for. Um, I've got specific setups, I give them names. Uh, for example, one is the tombstone. Um, I know exactly what I'm looking for in the tombstone and how to trade it. Um, so these are just trades in the playbook that you get really familiar with, that you can trade over and over again and develop them in bigger size. And he also talks about scaling horizontally, which is broadening the playbook because yes, you want to increase your size in your better trades, uh, but you also want to be continuously finding other sources of alpha in the market because nothing is guaranteed in this business. The trades that I take today uh, could fall out of favor tomorrow. For example, breakouts don't really work that well in a falling market. Uh, so you do have to constantly be on your toes for this business and the playbook is a very worthy read uh, from the mind of one of the world's top proprietary traders. Reminiscences of a stock operator comes in at number nine and it's a fictional account of Jesse Livermore through the name of Larry Livingston and the book details how he makes his fortunes, how he loses his fortunes and it's packed with trading advice for people in all markets because in this business it's you know the game never changes it's just the players and a lot of what went on in that time in the early 1900s the late 1800s still goes on today in various forms so it is a book to read uh, to keep your wits about you but it's also a very entertaining book now sadly Jesse Livermore uh, shot himself in the cloakroom of the Sherry Netherland Hotel in New York um, it is a very sad way to end a life um, and this is because he lost all of his money and he didn't feel that he had much to live for but yeah the book is very entertaining it's a great read and for anyone who trades stocks uh, it is an absolute must read. The tenth book is Atomic Habits by James Clear and this isn't a finance or a trading book but I found it very helpful because what it does is break down habits uh, why we have them, why they're so addictive, how to break them. Uh, so for me I found it quite helpful because it gave actionable advice on how to get rid of the, the worst habits, the things that cost you money in this business and how to improve them and create new habits. Now it is Amazon's number one best-selling book I believe uh, so plenty of people have read it um, but it is, it is a good read and I would recommend you to read it as well. Finally, bonus book number 11 is the UK Stock Trading Bible by Dominic Connolly. Now Dominic's a professional trader for many years um, and the book details the use of CFDs and professional trading strategies. Now I learned a lot about auctions and set stocks in this book. Some of it is now outdated but if you do trade UK stocks to a high level 
then I would recommend this book because I found it very insightful. Please let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books or if you can recommend any books to me. I'm always looking out to improve my knowledge, so I would appreciate it. Please don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss out on any future videos. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one.